Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to paint uh, this big guy. This is a, a bison that uh, my friend Dirk Smith um, took in Yellowstone Park. Uh, he takes a lot of great photos of wildlife and so he was kind enough to let me uh, dig through his uh, his photos and pick something out to do for this demo today. Um, he and his wife Holly uh, always see uh, animals in Yellowstone and, and my wife and I hardly see any so so, so I had to go and raid his photos uh, for this for this piece. Um, this is a, a piece that I'm doing for um, uh, a challenge called 30 times 30 uh, direct watercolor uh, put out there by Mark Taro Holmes of Citizen Sketcher blog and I'll, I'll link that uh, in the uh, information section under the video. To, to his blog, um, but basically the challenge is to do 30 paintings in 30 days, and um, uh, with kind of the, the caveat that you're doing it in direct watercolor, which is uh, basically just attacking the paper with paint, uh, not going in with pencils or pens or anything like that. Um, so this is my first time uh, attempting a direct watercolor. Um, you can see I'm putting the, the warm to cool background washes in there. <clears throat> um, so this for me a little is a little bit like flying blind. I, I'm, I'm very used to, to doing pencil sketches before I start um, anything uh, painting wise. I've sped it up to three times uh, speed now. I'm putting in some of the backgrounds, uh, just kind of indicators of where the uh, landscape is going to be coming in. <clears throat> Anyway, so um, yeah, this is for the 30 times 30 challenge, and I'm starting to rough in uh, the, the buffalo's head there, or the bison, excuse me, I guess they're called both, but uh, bison is correct, is the correct term. Um, so I'm kind of blocking in where the body will go here. Now I don't know that I will do uh, direct watercolors for... Um, all 30 of my paintings for the month of June. Um, I'm guessing I'll probably go back and forth and I will probably um, maybe do a, a painting, you know, record a painting a week for, for the YouTube channel here. Um, we'll see how it goes. Might be less, might be more. Um, at the end of the month I will probably do a video uh, that kind of shows an assortment of, of the paintings I've done over the month. <clears throat> Okay, I'm blocking in um, the bison, and I'm just sort of getting warms and cools in place and kind of figuring out uh, the composition and the shape of, of the animal there. Um, if you'd like to see, um, since I won't be posting videos of every single painting I do for the month of June, um, which will be 30 in total, um, might be a good idea to follow me if you want to see the paintings that I do. Uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, Brian Ashmore underscore Studio, or I started a new Facebook page, um, and that is uh, just Brian Ashmore Studio, um, and I'll have links uh, to those also in the information section under the video. Okay, I'm starting to go in. I, I um and define uh, some of the darker shapes. I'm not going fully dark yet, but I'm just sort of feeling my way through uh, the light and shadow on the bison here. Working the eye in a little bit. But yeah, if, you, if you'd like to see more of my work and um, uh, more like uh, preliminary drawings and sketches and, and, and just miscellaneous other things that uh, don't usually show up on the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, follow me on Instagram or on Facebook. I'm planning to post uh, quite a bit, especially during the month of June here. Okay, so I'm going in and I'm just sort of defining um, a little bit of his fur, uh, working in warms and cools here. Um, uh, a lot of burnt sienna, some uh, thalo blue, um, some ultramarine blue. I kind of lost track of which was which on this palette. I, I just filled it this past week or two. Um, 
And so I wasn't quite sure which was which, so I just kept grabbing blue um, for both of those wells. But So I'm going in and I'm defining, just beginning to define uh, the shadow side of, of uh, the face there, um, where his head and neck meet that shoulder. And trying to define um, some of the direction of, of that fur and... Um, and where it lays by using uh, the dark is kind of a negative shape against the light fur that's that's falling down across his neck area there. This is uh, probably my first uh, watercolor uh, exclusively exclusively um, uh, painting an animal. I've done a lot of animals. I used to work for a t-shirt company. Um, that did souvenir t-shirts for Yellowstone Park and quite a different places across the U.S. And I did a lot of wildlife and animals for that, you know, a lot of pencil drawings and, and ink drawings and things like that. But uh, I think it's the first time I've painted a, you know, wildlife type painting uh, with watercolor. And definitely the first time I've, I've tried this direct method of, of painting, which just turned out to be kind of fun. Now the, the paint that I'm using, okay, let's see, I'm going in I'm, and I've got the body um, shape of the bison uh, figured out pretty well. And I'm going in and I'm putting in some, put in some nice cool colors for where the shadows, the darkest areas are going to be that, that kind of blend it into kind of a, a burnt sienna and a reddish, a reddish brown. Um, it's burnt sienna and carmine in some of those mid-tone areas going in and, and suggesting a little bit of, whoop, going off camera there, uh, suggesting a little bit of the, uh, what's going on on the ground and stuff. I don't want to get too detailed with that stuff because um, I want the focal point to be the head, neck, and shoulder area of the bison there. Now the background, um, I didn't, uh, one thing I'm trying to train myself to do better is to not be such a slave to, to reference. And so when I put in the uh, landscape behind the bison, um, on that right side that, that's hitting his back haunches, um, in the photo, it was the, the landscape is kind of going in the same direction as the bison's back. And so I, I basically uh, put it in at an angle that kind of intersects the back and kind of leads the eye into the frame instead of out of it. So... Uh, that's one thing I did over on that right side. Okay, now I'm going in and trying to um, put some even darker values in and try to, and, and this is with Payne's, Payne's Gray with, I think I may have mixed a, a slight bit of blue or something into it to give it a little more warmth. Dab the eye there, I didn't like what happened. <clears throat> Hitting some darks, you know, around that nostril um, and the muzzle area of the, of the bison there. And always being mindful of that fur texture. So any time that I'm, um, I'm making sure that there are no uh, flat edges. That everything kind of has that fur texture uh, as part of the shape. Oh, as I was saying, uh, the, uh, this is the uh, Holbein uh, 250 palette that I showed in in my uh, palette review video a week or two ago. Um, and since then, I have filled it with these uh, Daniel Smith colors, and uh, just enjoying using it. It's it's a good size for, you know, a quick little painting like this, uh, which is done on an arches uh, or arch, <laughs> a cold press watercolor block, nine by twelve. If I didn't say that, so I'm really enjoying these Daniel Smith colors. They they're more vibrant than the Winsor and Newton ones that I've I've used in the past. Um, they they wet and um, kind of reconstitute on the palette much better. So yeah, putting in some nice uh, cool blues in some of those shadow areas along where the fur, uh, the bison has some long fur that kind of hits the ground there. Um, and so I want to get some warms and cools uh, back and forth going. Some more detail in that uh, kind of a crucial area there between the head and the shoulder to kind of show um, where the neck is um, 
in deep shadow, um, but also leaving little flecks of fur um, in that dark area so it's not just a, a pit of, of darkness there. Now the colors I've used on this are, um, I think the initial wash was um, either thalo or ultramarine blue with uh, yellow ochre. And the majority of the colors uh, that I'm using here are um, burnt sienna, um, carmine, uh, Payne's gray for uh, the darks, uh, the thalo, and the ultramarine blue. A little touch of thalo green uh, for some of the background stuff that's coming up. But those are the, the main colors that I'm, that I'm using. So I'm mix, mixing up um, kind of a reddish brown with the uh, carmine and burnt sienna there just to uh, start defining that big shadow shape um, from the side of the animal that, that goes down to the ground uh, where it's resting. And, uh, put some blue in there so it can uh, blend and, and get a, a nice warm to cool transition there. Now the brushes I'm using are, I started with a, a squirrel mop for the uh, the big washes at the beginning uh, that, that covered the whole page. Um, and the other brushes are um, silver black velvet uh, watercolor brushes. And I, I kind of started using these after seeing uh, one of Steve over at uh, the Mind of Watercolor uh, channel, uh, one of his videos, and he showed these brushes and talked about how great they were. They're a, a mix of, um, I believe they're a mix of synthetic and, um, let's see, I'm going and putting in just a few of the, the dark uh, little details and things to start defining the fur on the head there. Um, but the black velvet brushes, I think, are synthetic and squirrel. So you get the spring of a synthetic brush, um, but the uh, but the uh, reten you know the the water and, and pigment retention of a of a squirrel mop. So it makes a nice combination. And uh, when Steve showed them on on the channel, I was a little skeptical because they look so they look so non classic to me. You know, with the, they look too modern with the silver and the black and stuff, but. They're great brushes and I love them and I'm glad I tried them. Okay, I'm going in with just a little bit, little of phthalo green and phthalo blue um, to hit some of those trees um, in the background, hills, the landscape. And I don't want anything to be um, very dark or um, very warm. I want that to be cool. And light to uh, push back and show the uh, atmospheric perspective going on um, in the background. As things get further back, they show less contrast um, and they get much cooler in temperature. And that's one way to kind of um, push things back in your painting and, and, and really uh, get a sense of foreground and background. And, and mid ground, as the case may be. Okay, things are starting to come together. It's starting to look like, um, uh, you know, a painting. <laughs> but, um, but I'm just going in and kind of hitting some details in some of the shadow areas, the fur, the fur around the horn. Um, just going in and picking out detail. Um, trying to bring things to a level of completion uh, without overdoing it or overworking it. More dark uh, fur detail in the shadow area there. Putting in just a little more detail into that background to um, differentiate uh, the bison's back from the background. And a little more color uh, up on the top of his back I just put in. Um, I might go in and put more in in a minute, I'm not sure, like uh, to differentiate so the back doesn't uh, disappear into the sky too much. A little fur detail in the lighter areas there. 
that's one thing I'm doing is that the lightest area on the buffalo is that shoulder um, that you can see that's the lightest at this point. And I want to maintain um, that light area there because um, I want the, the head, the shoulder, the neck area there to be the focal point. And so that's where I'm going to have my most uh, contrast uh, between lights and darks and the most detail to kind of draw the eye in. A little more detail in that light area. Not too much, but just enough so it's not just a big blank area of, of light warm color. Now the, the bison's leg is, is you know, it's, it's resting on the ground next to him. And so I'm, I'm going in and trying to suggest that a little bit with uh, the shadow for the bottom of the hoof um, and uh, just some brushwork and um, texture there to kind of bring out the suggestion of that leg there a little bit. Putting in a little detail um, in the area around the bison. Um, I'm not following reference too much as much as I'm just trying to um, just get a little something going there so it's not so blank um, and and so the values aren't um, as light as the values in the shoulder of the bison to let that area stand out a little more. <laughs> Where did I go? What? <laughs> How did I miss this when I was editing? I'm just going to leave that in because I've already started recording this. Um, so anyway, at this point I'm looking at the sky and thinking it's probably a little too um, kind of mundane, kind of flat. So I'm just putting in a few um, little uh, suggestions of clouds and, and just a little variation in the sky so it's not just a, a flat value back there. A little more fur texture on the back of that leg. I'm just picking away at some of the, the fur texture without getting too wild about it, just to, just to get um, a little movement in some of those bigger, blanker areas, um, and just so that... Uh, there's a little more on the top of the back there to, to define it against the sky. But just little details here and there just to um, dance across the, the figure of the bison and, and hopefully draw the eye through the, the painting instead of getting stuck on, on flat shapes and things. I'm going in here and really hitting those darks. Um, I want uh, the front of that nose and, and his muzzle to pop against the background. Um, kind of putting in a, a tree line here that wasn't in the photo, I, I just felt like it needed a little bit of a mid-ground, um, the painting did, and um, just something to, to separate the foreground from the background a little bit more. So that's what that is, just a little bit of uh, phthalo green and, and, and blue to um, differenti differentiate the background from the foreground a little better. Little uh, shadow on the horn there. A little more fur detail, a little some darks, just to um, I don't know, break that area up a little bit, get some of that fur texture um, in the mid tones going. All right, I think that's done. I'm pulling off the tape. It's always fun to pull off the tape and and get that nice crisp line around your painting and see what you've got. 
So that's it. Uh, that's my uh, direct uh, painting of a bison uh, for the first time. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully there'll be more of these uh, coming soon. Take care. <laughs>